Cause you call me by my name The love you give me I just can't deny Yeah Hello everyone, hello everyone, welcome back to Daughters of the King podcast. I'm so glad to have you back. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you won't miss when I drop a new video and a new episode. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever, leave a review in the comments of how my podcast has helped you or anything. Just leave a review, it's totally free and i just would love your support okay uh without further ado um we're gonna get right into prayer father god heavenly father i just want to say thank you for another episode whoever's listening i just pray that this episode will touch you i pray that the holy spirit will move through me to be able to minister to you and give you the revelation that god gave me i pray that whoever has felt strayed from god backslid into sin matter no matter how big or how small or traumatic it was know that god loves you allow them to know that you love them and you've forgiven them and you have mercy and grace that never runs out so i just pray this episode will be a blessing to you in jesus name amen all right y'all so kind of moving a little fast i don't even have like a long crazy intro um the only thing I would say is so if you know what kava is you know what kava is it's like similar well I wouldn't say similar to chipotle but it's like chipotle and kava are like neck and neck like they're healthy fresh food expensive okay ching ching expensive so yesterday I went to kava right and I got me this harissa honey chicken bomb 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 that's what i get when i go there every time i haven't even tried no other meat and i get this like dressing or whatever it called tzatziki i think i'm saying that right anyway it was good and then i did a little research on what i just ate the harissa honey chicken harissa is actually like a chili powder it's like a spice or whatever so i'm doing the research and it has something called so it has something called capacian it has like that is something that spicy food has it irritates pain receptors in the digestive tract um it proved to protect itself the gut speeds up to get rid of the capacitin or whatever however the word that i just said i put it on the screen because i don't even know if i'm be pronouncing stuff right but however that capacitin it actually slows down your digestive system so when you're eating spicy food and you're indulging in it like you know how you ever ate a hot bag of cheetos and you're just eating it you're just eating it you're just eating it it's good right until 12 hours later or way later you start feel the aftermath and your stomach hurts and all this other stuff so that's just what happened to me I know that might be a little TMI, but like, I did not know it slow was slowing down my digestive tract because usually when I eat before eight o'clock at night, like I can go ahead and get it out of my system. But this thing did not hit me until this morning. So I'm recording this podcast at one o'clock Thursday, July 20th. So I'm dropping this today. YouTube is what be slowing me down. Like it's YouTube. I promise you like my editing skills are a one it be youtube that be trying to slow me down so i don't know if i'm just gonna drop the audios on thursdays and then the video on fridays because yeah i don't know we'll see how it goes today because last week i got up early and everything and then my my video my youtube podcast still dropped at freaking 12 in the morning or whatever i'm like what in the heck like it took that long to process so I don't know if I'm just gonna switch my days to Friday like y'all will still get the audio on Thursday and Friday would just be the day y'all will see the video the actual video and I, I don't know if y'all watch with the Perry's but they do that as well with the Perry's I noticed that they drop the audio before they drop their video and it's because YouTube takes so long so I apologize in advance anyways that thing slowed down my digestive tract 
and it hurt and tore my stomach up and I was supposed to get up early today but I didn't so that's just my little I guess this is my that's just gonna be my hey girl hey okay that's just gonna be my hey girl hey and we're gonna get right into this episode I've already prayed and you know did all the things and like I told y'all Tuesday I drop blogs Wednesday I worship Thursday podcasts right that's how God always told me to do it and so if you have not checked out the blog go check out the blog the blog is very um it's very straight to the point okay the podcast is more like revelation and all that stuff like that so without further ado this episode is called um prodigal daughter and i have all my notes right here y'all all my notes like anyway it's called prodigal daughter so it's referring to the story of prodigal son so we're gonna just go ahead and get into the story of prodigal son i'm going to go ahead and read luke 15 for you guys luke um let me go to the verse luke 15 starting at verse 11 so you can read along with me i'm gonna i usually i've been trying to read in king's james version just to kind of (laughs) like test my little spiritual walk you know because king james version is the hardest version but with the holy spirit nothing is impossible okay so i don't feel like reading out all the die 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 shall stuff so we're just gonna keep it simple and i'm just gonna read the csb version so okay starting at verse 11 the parable of the lost son he also said a man had two sons the younger of them said to his father father give me the share of the estate i have come into me so he distributed the assets to them not many days later the younger son gathered together all he had and traveled to a distant country where he squandered his estate in foolish living after he had spent everything a severe famine struck that country and he had nothing then he went to work for one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs he longed to eat his fill from the pods that the pigs pigs were eating but no one would give him anything verse 17 when he came to his senses he said how many of my father's higher workers have more than enough food and here i am dying of hunger i'll get up and go to my father and say to him father i have sinned against heaven in your sight i'm no longer worthy to be called your son make me like one of your higher workers so he got up and went to his father but while the son was still a long way off his father saw him and was filled with compassion he ran through his arms around his neck and kissed him the son said to him father i have sinned against heaven in your sight i'm no longer worthy to be called your son but the father told his servants quick bring out the best robe put it on him put a ring on his finger sandals on his feet then bring the fat and calf and slaughter it and let's celebrate with a feast because this son of mine was dead and is alive again he was lost and is now found so they began to celebrate now his older brother was in the field as he came Okay, I'm going to just pause because we're going to save that little last little chunk for like later in the episode. So I just want y'all to let that sink in, okay? Um, Luke 15, okay, if y'all don't know. Okay, so prodigal, the word prodigal, it means reckless, irresponsible, self-indulgent, imprudent. And the word imprudent was like really sticking out to me when I was like worshiping God. And I was like, God, like give me revelation for this episode and if you go to the if you go and look up the word imprudent the synonym for imprudent imprudent is foolish mind you proverbs talk a lot about like foolish ways so we're gonna just talk we're just gonna i just want to give you all the verses first before i dive into everything so proverbs 1 7 says the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge Fools despise wisdom and discipline, okay? Remember that. So we're going to go to Proverbs 29, 11. 29, 11. A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise person holds back. Okay? We're going to go to Proverbs 24, 16. And it says... Though a righteous person falls seven times, but he will get up, but the wicked will stumble into ruin. Okay. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. It says, 
But the person without the spirit does not receive what comes from God spirit because it is foolish to him. He is not able to understand it since it is evaluated spiritually. So basically that's saying that a person that does not have the Holy Spirit would not be able to understand what comes from God. It's just nonsense to him. Okay, you ever try to tell somebody about God or whatever, like they just don't care because y'all don't have the same spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. They have a demonic spirit. The two just don't go. So they're not going to understand it. And it's just it's just nonsense to them they don't care okay so one john okay hold on one john one john one nine okay i had to write all these verses down it says if we confess our sins he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and then this is going to be the last verse that i'm going to give y'all so make sure y'all listening so y'all because y'all going to need these verses while i finish this episode jeremiah 8 verse 5 says why have these people turned away why is jerusalem always turning away they take hold of deceit they refuse to return all right so like i said when the prodigal son ran from his father he ran from his father it was very much something that he did be out of foolishness okay so that's why i gave you all these verses of fools and stuff like that so you notice how it said that the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge and fools despise wisdom and discipline so when you do not have this fear reverent fear from god not this like not the worldly type of fear but the biblical type of fear of god like that reverent and the respect of god when you don't respect god like when you don't like really like take heed to god you don't have a relationship with him you're you you're just you probably only like come to him when you need something like you just don't fear god like you don't have that that reverence respect i know i keep saying that but yeah that's just kind of what it is um when you don't have that you're more likely to be a fool you're more like you're more likely to like despise wisdom and not be disciplined you're more likely to get off guard, get distracted, get disconnected from God. And so when the prodigal son left, notice how he left with possessions. He left with possessions. He went away. A famine came into the land and he had no choice but to go back home. He's like, why am I about to be working? And my father has everything that I need. So it's the same way with God. Like we be trying to go our own way, do, go our own route. And then we end up getting to a place of like, why am I trying to do all this? When God, like he has better for me. We get to that realization. And I want to tell you that it's good that we get to that realization. It's good that we get to a point where we like, okay, we need to repent. We need to change our ways and whatnot. But like, I'm just trying to like boldly, like I wish I had like a bold <laughs> boldness but um possession when this prodigal son went and he left with his possession um the holy spirit was telling me like yesterday like this type of thing possession is a form of distraction used by the enemy to cause us to stray and dis disconnect from god luke 15 verse 13 when the enemy would use that possession to get you disconnected from God so that possession can be anything okay let's just say it's an idol or whatever it can be your phone it can be you know a person it can be your career it can be anything that's just kind of like you're using it to like it's disconnecting you from God pretty much that's the simplest way I can put it so you notice how the prodigal son repented he returned he reconciled to his father the three r's he repented he returned and he reconciled to his father okay so you may be a prodigal daughter you may be a, a daughter of god who have strayed away from god or maybe you never had a relationship with god maybe you don't even know who jesus is maybe you have all these questions um like i said maybe you have a relationship with god but you've been disconnected and god was trying god was telling me that you don't have to like physically like run away from him or 
backslide into sin. Yes, this episode has something to do with that too. But he said it can be as simple as you waking up in the morning and you choosing your phone over your Bible or you waking up in the morning, you not even like greeting God. You're not even praying uh, consistently, persistently as Philippians states. You're not even like being like aware of your relationship with God. It's just kind of on the back burner and you're probably not doing it on purpose. It's probably not intentional. You're probably always working you're always doing something you're always busy you never have time for god so god was like pointing out that it doesn't have to be this thing of backsliding into a sin it can be that but it can also be just be it could be something that's distracting you that's disconnecting you from god which can be your phone it can be a friend that you're still trying to like you're still trying to hold on to that friendship it can be toxic family it can be anything that just like causing you to disconnect it's causing you to like think about this thing over god like anything that's uh that you think of um consuming your mind it's usually an idol if god isn't on the throne of your heart but something else is it's an idol okay so you may have heard the term too far too gone but i'm here to tell you that that is the number one lie of the enemy to keep you bound. So you might feel shame, condemnation of your sins. You might feel unworthy. You might feel like, dang, like, why can't I get consistent? Why do I keep getting distracted? Why I keep backsliding and um, just being a prodigal, okay, a prodigal daughter. Um, I don't, I want you to like really think about Luke 15, like starting at verse 11 like i want you to really think like the character that this son had of his father okay so when <clears throat> so most people wander from the faith because of money because of all these opportunities that we have nowadays we have everything at our fingertips we have doordash at our fingertips uber eats we have social media we have youtube we have all of these things right at our fingertips so it leaves no room from God. And if we're satisfied and we're fulfilled and how are we supposed to have a hunger for God? That's why it's so important to fast and pray, you guys. Like it is so important. So 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. Matthew 6, 24 says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate one and love the other or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So this is just, like I said, the prodigal son, he left with possessions. He left with money. He had his, he had his visa card. He had his passport. He had his flight ticket. He had his flight book. He had, he knew where he was going. He had the money. Okay. He said, let me work for my father for a few minutes few days whatever how long he worked and let me get out of here okay and that might be useless you're like let me do what god telling me to do right now but after 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 this i'm gonna do what i want to do or you might feel like i said it can be intentional or unintentional you might be in your like you might be thinking it you might be thinking that your ways are right and just but the bible says like there's just nobody like we can think that our ways are right and our motives are right but it's not it's not okay so he left with all this money possessions and it ran out and you just notice how god calls i don't feel like when it was a famine that got calls on the prodigal son that that was a coincidence that was god drawing him back that was him being drawn back to his father so sometimes when you do stray away from God, and I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all can witness it, when you try to stray away from God, you try to go to that party, you try to hang out with those friends, you try to do what you want to do, and God still found a way to find you. Yep, because he's omnipresent. So what do you thought? You thought you was going to outrun God because you cannot outrun God, okay? So yeah, like God, he will find us, okay? <laughs> and that's because he loves us and he want to draw us in. He would not have us force a relationship with him. Uh, he is very gentle, but he will send people or things or stuff, circumstances to happen to get us back on the right track. And it talks about that in Isaiah, like whether you want her to the right or the left, like God will put you back on the right path. So 
We need to learn how to be dependent on God. This means requiring someone or something for financial, emotional, or other support. We require God for financial, emotional, spiritual support in all areas of. Without him, we can do nothing. John 15, 5. So notice how the prodigal son, he was trying to be independent of his father, but really he needed to be dependent on his father. Through that independency, it caused a lot of just unnecessary pain while he should have been dependent and it would have just caused more joy and also notice how when the prodigal son returned he was ready to work he was ready to repent he was ready to own up to his mistakes so i want you to know like if it's if this is you be ready to repent confess your sins to god whatever you've done i don't care if you think it's small or big like i don't care if it's simple as we be naming stuff small and it's not small to God, okay? We be thinking we waking up to our phones, getting on social media is not a big deal. But it is a big deal because it's a distraction away from spending time with God first. How are you going to pour into anybody else before you get poured into from the source, which is God, right? So notice how he was ready to work. So I just want to like emphasize, are you ready to serve God? You done backslid, you done had distractions, you done had money, you done had all these things that, you know, like took your focus off of God. You are God's daughter. So are you ready to serve his kingdom? Are you ready to walk in purpose? Are you ready to be fruitful and multiply the earth? Are you ready to be all who God called you to be? The prodigal son did not go back to his father and resentment and guilt or shame he did not go back to his father with all these uh, negative emotions he did not go back to his father expecting his father to do everything for him he worked for his father you need to work for God's kingdom God is not going to drop everything on your doorstep you need to put faith behind your work okay so these are some godly affirmations that I just kind of wrote down surrounding this story. I need Jesus because it is him who gives me life. It is him that is the way. It is him that is the truth. I repent of all my sins and God remembers my sins no more. I am free because the son set me free. I am love. God chose me before I could ever chose him. God has the final say in my case. This too shall pass. He has done it before. He would do it again. I am a winner. God is my helper. I am the Lord's masterpiece. He would not abandon me. So Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore no now condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So I just want to finish reading the rest of the prodigal son to you. What where I have paused that I want to finish reading that. OK. So. Luke 15, starting at 25. Now his older son was in the field as he came near the house. He heard music and dancing, so he summoned one of the servants, questioning what these things meant. Your brother is here, he told him, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and didn't want to go in. So his father came out and pleaded with him, but he replied to his father, Look, I have been slaving many years for you, and I have never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me a goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your assets with prostitutes, you slaughtered the fat and calf for him. Son, he said to him, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now is found. So I don't know if that's you today. If it's not you today, it's going to be you. You were lost. Now you're found. You was in the world. Now you with Jesus. You used to run to smoking, boys, sexual sins, um, drinking. You used to run to all these things when you felt a problem, when you felt some type of way in life. 
but now you run to God. Now you're in prayer. Now you're asking God to strengthen your fruits of your spirits. Now you're asking God to be there for you. Now you're asking God to fill all the empty places. Now you're asking God for purpose. Now you're asking God for provision. Now you're seeking after God's face. You used to seek after smoking. You used to seek after boys. You used to seek after alcohol. You used to seek after the things that would never fulfill you. Now you're seeking God's presence. I don't know who needs to hear this today, but you living for God is a celebration. It's worth celebrating every single day. That is the joy. Every single day. Celebrate that. Not because of your own doing, but because of what God did for you. Okay? That is worth celebrating. Don't you ever let anyone dim your light. And you notice how in the prodigal son, his own brother, his own flesh and blood was not happy about his growth with his father he was not happy that he returned he was not happy that he repented he was not happy of none of this because he felt like i've been working for you this whole time but you're celebrating him you have not once celebrated me i want y'all to realize and like see this story we have someone who was doing bad in their life and who changed that is worth the celebration Then you have someone who's always doing good. They're always doing good. They're always doing good. And I'm not saying that they're not worth celebrating, but you are perfect. You was perfect. Your brother was not. So that's what is, um, that's what I'm pointing out in this story. So I just want to really point out that not everybody will be happy that you're living for God. You have people turn on you. You have, when you start walking in purpose, you have people calling you out of names, especially on social media. Like, I don't know what it is, but people feel the need to comment on certain things or do certain you know what i'm saying so you will have people that will not be happy that you're living for god they won't understand it they'll call you weird they'll call you all sorts of things they'll call you different they'll call you religious they'll call you all these names and they already did the same thing to jesus so so what like so what okay this walk is a lonely walk and it's a tough pill to swallow but would you rather be following the crowd to hell or would you rather be on that narrow path to heaven so yeah like he was not happy of his brother's like repentance and there are going to be people that would rather you be gosh i'm stuttering there will be there will rather be people in your past that will rather you go back to your old ways, be the girl that you used to be, do the things you used to do just because it makes them feel superior or whatever. But when you change and you're better in yourself, they feel like they can't compete with that. When really they can't compete with that. When when Jesus is on your life, nobody can compete with that nobody because he's over like he's lord over your life he made that change you didn't change because you wanted to go to the gym and get thick or you know what i'm saying you didn't have that motive when you went to the gym you had you wanted to take care of your body i don't know why i was on the gym topic but maybe somebody need to hear that there's a lot of people a lot of women actually like they're going to the gym for this like body image outward appearance type of motive how about you just go to the gym because you want your body to feel good you want your body to be in shape not on the outside but like on the inside because you want to take care of your body which is the temple of the holy spirit if you have the holy spirit all right so god gave me this perfect analogy so first off god said anyone can disconnect from him it doesn't take much. You know, the enemy is out here like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. So, yeah, it doesn't take much to, like, drift away from God. It doesn't take much. It's actually more effort, faith, and trust to actually stay connected to him. That's why everybody's not doing it. Because it's it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. Um, so, God gave me this GPS analogy. He said, you use your GPS to get connected to where you are going. Use your prayers 
to get connected to him. He said the Bible is a tool to help while on the journey, but the Bible alone does not connect connect someone to God. You can read, it's actually prayer that connects you to God. You can read the Bible all you want. You can know it like the back of your hand, like the Pharisees, they knew the Bible, they knew all of that, and they were still disconnected from God. They were still disconnected. They still rebuked Jesus um, in the New Testament. Um, yeah, God is saying like prayer is how you connect it to me. It's how you connect to me. The Bible is a great tool while you're on a journey, while you're connected. But you cannot use the Bible by itself to be connected to me because it's not going to work because you need me. You need prayer to read that Bible. And you can read the Bible all you want. You can know the scriptures like the back of your hand. But if you don't pray, you're still disconnected from God. And that is the analogy that God gave me. And anybody can vouch for this. You can go pick up your Bible right now and not include God, not ask for help, and just read it in your flesh. And it would not make sense to you. It would actually probably disconnect you more from God because you, now you have all these questions. Now you don't understand. It's prayer that connects us to God. It's prayer that answers all these questions questions and doubts and all these things is prayer and it's the holy spirit that allows us to do this so i'm gonna keep going with the gps analogy <clears throat> when your gps is out of connection you try and find a signal to reconnect i'm pretty sure y'all all have y'all all been on the road and your gps start at the funny that it says no internet connection it doesn't want to connect so you're trying to find all these ways like what's wrong with it you know what i'm saying you're trying to fix it whatever you're trying to find a signal to reconnect you finally find that signal it finally reconnects that signal is the holy spirit our helper to reconnect us back to god the father because the holy spirit convicts us so when we stray away from god and we disconnect from god the holy spirit is convicting us telling us like look like that is not for you you know stop doing that don't listen to that don't watch that be careful like the holy spirit is like our signal to reconnect to god god the father this connection happens when something else is on the throne of your heart taking our focus completely off of god usually through lust of the eyes we live in a generation where we see something we want it we see something we gotta have it and it's usually through this that takes our focus off of god the devil did this he was a mastermind at this he had lust of the flesh lust of the eyes um i forgot the other one but yeah this is what i want you to know i'm wrapping up this episode but this is what i want you to know stay connected to god by prayer if you get the nest, if you get disconnected, the Holy Spirit will help you. The Bible alone do not keep you connected to God because you need prayer to read that Bible. God has unconditional love. We see this throughout the prodigal son story. So maybe you are a prodigal daughter. It's okay to admit it. It's okay to confess it. When that son returned to his father the father celebrated him he put on the nicest jewelry the shoes he he gave him the most fattest calf the best food he celebrated him i want you to know that god celebrates you when we get baptized when we dedicate our life to jesus when we return and we repent god heaven is rejoicing over that so god has unconditional love so that means that no matter what we do, he is going to love us. He don't love you any less today. God is faithfulness. He has faithful. He has faithfulness. Mm, sorry. God is faithful when we are not. I'm currently reading Deuteronomy and the Israelites. If you know the story, you know the story. I think I'm going to do like a study on this probably. But anyway, God was faithful to the Israelites, but they were disobedient. And they didn't enter the promised land because of that disobedience. So God ended up giving the promised land to the next generation. So you notice how God never lied. 
because he he promised Abraham that he would give it to his um the generations to come so I just want y'all to know that <clears throat> God is faithful even when we're not so and Paul talked about this and I want to pull it up because I feel like somebody really, really needs to hear this. And I really want to pull it up. But anyway, 2 Tim Timothy 2.13. If we are faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot disown himself. So God is a God um, that he can't lie. So even though this you have strayed away from God, even though you've been disobedient, you backslid, you put, you made idols or whatever you've done, sis. I don't know what you've done. God knows what you've done. I don't. You and God know, okay? You need to repent of it and you need to know that God is still faithful even when you wasn't, even when we wasn't, okay? So God doesn't get in the way of our sinful desires. Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, It says, but your iniquities are separating you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not, so that he does not listen. So when we sin over and over and over and we just in our own zone, it separates us from God. So he will never get in the way of that. He let us have our thing. Um, he's a gentleman. He doesn't force it. So that's why it's important to repent and confess it. Because once you repent and confess it, you're like, here, God, like you can have this. You can do whatever you wish. You can. I surrender to you. But when you're holding on to it and you're holding on to guilt, shame, you're trying to hide from God. It just makes it worse because you're just going to feel more disconnected from him if you were to just repent. Sometimes we want things before we're ready. So, you know, the prodigal son, he left his father's house. He did all these things. Sometimes we do want things before we're ready. And that's why it's so important to wait on God's timing for things because his timing is perfect. Not everyone is happy about your spiritual growth. I talked about that. The journey of faith can be lonely. I talked about that. God is always ready for us to spend time with him. He's always ready for us to come back to him. He, like I said, he loves you no less today. He loves you the same. <clears throat> Thank it. When you're spending time with God, think of it as something you get to do, not something you have to do. A God, sovereign God, who wants to spend time with us. Meanwhile, we live in a world where most people, I'm not going to say all people, most people, they don't even value quality time. It's all about the, get, the quick get rich scheme and it's all about what can what benefits me what makes it's all about self-centeredness and all this stuff like that but God actually wants your time let that sit he loves you he wants your time I don't care what you've done he doesn't care what you've done obviously don't abuse his grace you know what I'm saying that is not why Jesus died on the cross. He didn't die on the cross so that we can abuse the freedom that he's given us. He died on the cross so that we can be free. So that you are no longer bound to sin. So God forgives. God forgives and restores. God doesn't care about what other people think of you or what other people think of him. Love, grace, forgiveness, and salvation is the main theme of being a prodigal daughter. Love, grace, forgiveness, and salvation. Be dependent of God. Repent and serve God. And Jonah, I'm not going to go too in-depth of Jonah. But Jonah was someone that tried to outrun God. And he could not outrun God. And yeah, he eventually returned. I was trying to think of someone in the bible who actually ran from god and it was jonah you know he got swallowed up by a fish and yeah god chased him and god chased me like when i was trying to do my own thing god kept like the further i would run the further god would pull me back like where do you think you're going so there's some of us that are like we were chosen by god and we try to outfront him. We try to do our own thing. It's just not working. So give it up. Surrender, sis. Just surrender it, okay? Like, give it all to God. I want to leave you with this. When we don't have anyone to go to, we may resort back to what we used to know. 
So God promised to never leave us and forsake us, but it's important to have community or some godly friend that will hold you accountable or your preacher or your pastor or, you know, whatever, you know, some type, some type of wise counsel, right? I believe if the prodigal son had people who were around him, uplifting him, and if he sought that wise counsel, I believe that he wouldn't have ran away from his father. But when you feel alone already, when you feel desert, when you feel like isolated, when you feel like you've done all you can do, you, you take, you're more likely to take matters into your own hands. Sometimes we can be in a room full of people. We can have the community. We can go to church. We can read our Bible. We can pray three times a day. We can fast and we can still feel lonely. We can still feel distant. We can feel still drawn to idols. We can still feel like picking up our phone and scrolling on social media and not reading our Bible. We can still figure uh, We can still feel all these things that the prodigal son must have felt. And I, I believe that one of the reasons he ran away because he probably felt like he could do it by himself he probably felt like he can do it alone and the bible says that there's it's not good for men to be alone like we we can't do this alone we cannot do this without god god isn't expecting us to figure it out he knows the plans he has for us we aren't even meant to figure out everything we are meant to trust him god gives us 24 hours a day that's what we're meant to to take on okay in the lord's prayer it talks about give us our daily bread notice how it says daily bread not monthly bread not weekly bread not yearly bread it says daily bread to god giving us one day at a time that's all we can handle anything more than that it's just you're trying to figure out what's going to happen a week from now so i just kind of want to leave you with that like you know surround yourself with people um a quote by louise hay when the past calls let it go to voicemail it has nothing new to say you don't have to listen would you really dig into yesterday's garbage to take tonight's meal do you dig into yesterday's mental garbage to create today's experiences the answer is no because it's really easier to just best to just let go of your past and move forward with god and not to like linger on these things um sometimes the bravest thing you can do is to never look back and so i guess my question to you today is are you backsliding are you wandering do you feel empty have you accepted jesus as your lord and savior what lie have you been believing from the enemy comment below let me know in the comments if this is you or this episode resonated resonated with you um if you know if you don't know jesus as your lord and savior we can say this prayer right now all right so repeat after me i come to you heavenly father i come to you in prayer asking for forgiveness of my sins I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Jesus is your son, that he died on the cross at Calvary, that I might be forgiven and have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Father, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. I ask you right now to come into my life, be my personal Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins and I will worship you all the days of my life. Because your word is truth, I confess with my mouth. I am born again, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so that just kind of wraps up my episode we're about to get into um bible trivia three two one all right daily bible trivia apparently we have a reward my reward is great in heaven (laughs) it's like nah it's like yes okay it's just so much stuff popping up all right, so which king of Israel defeated the giant Goliath? David, Solomon, Joseph, or Saul? It was David. On the first day of creation, God said, Let there be animals, sky, light, or plants. It was light.
Who crucified Jesus? I'm about to get these pronunciations wrong. Mesopotamians, Spartans, Romans, Assyrians. It was Romans. All right, y'all. So I got all three of those questions right. And this pretty much wraps up my episode. I thank y'all so much for watching. Thank you for staying tuned. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. That Christian girl, Daughters of the King. Um, share this with someone and stay blessed. Bye. If I told me I'm someone, told me I'm someone, told me I'm someone, told me I'm, told me I'm, told me I'm someone, told me I'm someone, know that I'm someone.